Hi there, and welcome to MakerSite. We are a software as a service product that delivers you automatic digital twins of your products and their supply chains and applications across business, sustainability, health and safety, and regulatory criteria to analyze your products. Let's have a look at some of MakerSite's capabilities and let's use a blender as an example. This bill of material of a blender that you see here is structured in different items. Here we have some level 1 items. We'll call it the basic assembly of how the blender is made up. Here you will see the housing, blender's jar and components where we just understand the material part number. We also have material specifications to some extent such as the amounts and the units. Then below level 2 and 3 are the sub-assemblies of the level 1 items. With MakerSite, you can simply import this data by drag and dropping the bill of material into the platform. Our AI engine automatically maps the bill of material versus our 140 integrated premium and public databases in order to surface the digital twin of the product and how it is made. You can understand the mapping logic based on our transparent product mapping and there is no limitation to how complex those products are for most of our customers. Sometimes the products are as complex as multiple 10,000 line items. You'll instantly get an understanding of different criteria of the products, whether in the area of understanding the supply chain, understanding the should cost, getting an environmental footprint, seeing what supplies consider within the supply chain, substance risk that might apply a full life cycle assessment, or global regulations that might apply. Okay. So let's have a look into the product model to give you an understanding of how MakerSite visualizes data. Here is a Sankey diagram, and it is a view that illustrates the flow of material that we've seen in the bill of material. You can see how much kilogram of the motor, for example, goes into the blender. MakerSite has the big advantage that it enhances the view of the supply chain. While we don't know what or how your product is made until we ingest the bill of materials and understand your product, we know how certain components are made in your product. For example, here's a ceramic capacitor, of which we only see a manufacturer part number. We can now drill in further into that set of supply chain to understand how is a ceramic capacitor made up, as we didn't have this information in the bill of materials. This is because MakerSite references the ceramic capacitor in the bill of material versus all the integrated databases and understand the supply chain in the component down to the raw material level where we can see nickel, copper, tin, barium, and so on. Let's go back to the blender. I can go and analyze it across all different criteria, so let's have a look at our CO2 footprint. We can look at all the LCA criteria that our platform enables, as well as supplier-specific ISO compliance and path-compliant lifecycle assessments, and as well as fully automated scope 3 reporting. Now, we'll have a similar visualization. However, what we're looking at is the footprint of CO2 and the flow of CO2 of each material and process. And it's ideal to get away a hotspot of analysis of where is the biggest impact of my product coming from. And what we see here is Stata. We can drill further into that Stata now and understand what it's made of. The Stata is made out of chromium steel, so it doesn't help us too much drilling in any further. However, we can drill further into ferro nickel. We can see the ferro nickel supply chain from the CO2 flow view, though you can't really change how chromium steel's made up. Therefore, let's go back to the blender. But if I were a product designer or a product engineer, and I'd like to understand how I can improve my product, I can now look and change the material of the stator into aluminium alloy foil. And right away, MakerSite delivers a view of how that impacted the category which we are analyzing the product upon which in this case, CO2 emissions. I can now understand the impact on the other categories as well. For example, let's have a look at how much are the costs, now that we have chosen aluminium instead of steel. We can place the information in a grid view for better viewing, and we can see the should cost of the product which the change is made. So it's neither feasible to look at the product from a sustainability improvement perspective with aluminium alloy, nor from a should cost perspective. We can dig deeper and understand further criteria as well and see how is the supply chain risk within my product model and see where are the hotspots within my product actually and where should I maybe find different materials or maybe change suppliers in order to de-risk the supply chains within my product. 
I can as well go and understand the full life cycle assessment of my product looking not only at the supply chain upstream, but as well look at the use phase and the end of my life of my product. Let's look at the blender again. Before, we only looked at the area of production. With the blender we can see this is only a small fraction of the overall CO2 footprint that actually occurs. If you look at the use phase of the product, you will notice the CO2 is much higher because of the mixing of a soup in the blender. At the end of the life cycle of the product, such as sending it to trash or going to recycling, you will be able to see this in more detail as well. Understanding which aspects contribute the most to this blender in terms of CO2. We hope you enjoyed that small glimpse of MakerSite. It would be a pleasure for us to give you a further view into the platform and give you a more elaborate understanding of how MakerSite can exactly help your company. Not only through automated reporting across the areas of sustainability, cost, compliance, health and safety and risk, but really enable decisions of experts and non-experts that need the data and need it fast at a massive scale.